Now, I'm going to be talking about the best treatment for bacterial vaginosis. First of all, what is bacterial vaginosis? This is caused by the bacteria called Gardnerella vaginalis. It presents with a fishy odor, grayish white discharge, and the symptoms can be worse after sex or just after your period. Now, in terms of medical treatment, the best treatment and first line choice of treatment is oral metronidazole. This comes as a 400 milligram tablet that's taken twice a day for five to seven days. If you have any problem taking metronidazole 400 milligrams twice a day for five to seven days, there's the option of taking a stat dose of 2000 grams, which is five days worth of the 400 milligram tablet. However, it is advised not to do this in pregnancy because side effects such as diarrhea, as well as having yeast infection, which can create more problems. Now, side effects of oral metronidazole can include diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, headaches, dizziness, and it can interact with other medications such as epileptic medications. However, it does not affect contraceptive pills, so you do not need to double up on your contraceptive pill if you're metronidazole. It is advised not to take metronidazole with alcohol because it can cause reactions such as feeling flushed, headaches, a fast pulse rate, fast breathing. And so if you take alcohol, you might have to take it before or at least 48 hours after you've taken the antibiotics. If you're not keen on taking oral tablets of metronidazole, there are what we call intravaginal options. So you've got intravaginal metronidazole, which comes in 0.75% concentration, and it is taken once a day for five to seven days. Now you do not have to worry about getting your fingers dirty because intravaginal metronidazole comes with an applicator and use of a plunger. You want to avoid intravaginal metronidazole if you're having periods, as well as avoiding sexual intercourse. Side effects can include itchiness, burning, numbness of the skin, and very rarely you might also get diarrhea. Another intravaginal option is the 2% clindamycin cream, which is taken once a day for seven days. Again, it comes with an applicator and it is not recommended in the first trimester of pregnant women. Side effects can include diarrhea, thrush, vaginal discharge, vaginal discomfort, and there is also the oral version of clindamycin, which is taken 300 milligrams twice daily for a week. However, oral version of clindamycin can be known to cause diarrhea and stomach upset. Another option which I must admit I'm not too familiar with is oral tinidazole. Oral tinidazole is another option if you cannot tolerate metronidazole or clindamycin, but again, it has similar side effects of stomach upset and diarrhea. In terms of treatment in pregnancy, it is thought that bacterial vaginosis can cause a small chance of miscarriage as well as premature birth, and this is why treatment is recommended, especially if you're having symptoms. There is no indication that using oral 400 mg metronidazole is unsafe in pregnancy, so it is the same regimen of taking 400 mg twice a day for five to seven days. If you're not keen on taking the oral option, you can try the intravaginal option of the metronidazole 0.75% or the intravaginal clindamycin of 2%. However, it is advised to avoid intravaginal clindamycin during the first trimester and can be used mainly in your second and third trimesters. Now, if you're having a relapse of the bacterial vaginosis or having recurrent symptoms, then you have to think, have I used the treatment properly in the first place? Did I use the intravaginal gel properly? Did that complete the course of the oral antibiotics? And what are you practicing? Are you doing douching? Are you using bubble baths? Are you using anti septics these things can change the pH of your vagina because if you remember your vagina is usually acidic but what happens is when the pH of your vagina changes it increases the pH and encourages the growth of bacteria which becomes more than the growth of the good bacteria which is usually lactobacilli also you have to consider could I have a coexisting infection that I'm treating as bacterial vaginosis but remains untreated. So for example, you might have an STI or something like Trichomonas vaginalis, for instance, which can present with a fishy odor similar to bacterial vaginosis. Also, if you're on the intrauterine device such as the IUD coil used for contraception, that can also increase the chances of you having bacterial vaginosis. If you're very sexually active or recent change of partner, then that can also keep the bacterial vaginosis symptoms going because it could be that your partner is actually a carrier of the bacteria. In terms of recurring bacterial vaginosis, if you've tried everything else and you want to continue with treatment, one option would be to take the intravaginal metronidazole gel, this is usually given twice a week for the next four to six months that would reduce the chance of recurrence of the bacterial vaginosis. If you're not keen on medication, there are other more natural options like Balance Active or Canis Balance. These are used either as a pessary or gel. And what they aim to do 
is to restore the normal vaginal of the pH, as well as reduce the fishy odor and vaginal discharge, and they're usually applied once at night for seven days. Naturally, you should also take lots of probiotics because as I mentioned, you've got reduction of the lactobacilli and you've got growth of bad bacteria. So taking probiotics that contain lactobacilli will encourage restoration of the normal good bacteria in your flora of the vagina that would now encourage the pH to go up again and reduce the incidences of the bad bacteria, especially Gardnerella vaginalis. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to share, like and subscribe.